Good evening. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, learning analytics, um, many tools, and uh, core methods. My name is uh, George Karaoke, and uh, uh, I have a Bachelor of Science, Accounting Information Systems, and also a Bachelor of Arts, uh, inter International Studies uh, from WorkTech. I also have a Business Intelligence Certificate uh, from WorkTech, and I'm anticipating to get my business analyst uh, certificate uh, this December. So uh, I learned structured analytic process, uh, which begins with the business question. And then after that, we go to data collection or data pre-processing, and then data cleaning, data scrubbing, and then we go to data exploration, and then we do meddling, and then we do analysis, and reporting, and then we move back to the next uh, business question. These are softwares that I learned or I used, uh, ERD+, SAS, my SQL, uh, RStudio, Office, and uh, Frontline Servers. So I began uh, learning data exploration, and a case in example uh, is uh, cluster analysis or data segmentation. Uh, for which uh, you're able to group, uh, uh, you group objects uh, within clusters that exhibit a high correlation or exhibit similarities, where, where, whereas those in different clusters are dissimilar. So I used a data set uh, for a fictitious company uh, called Performance uh, Loan Equipment, and uh, I was able to do a cluster analysis uh, using Excel Miner. And the clustering, uh, generated four clusters of customers with an output based uh, on the best cluster or the best fit. So we can see these are my clusters, cluster one, cluster two, cluster three, and cluster four. Cluster analysis uh, is a very valuable analytic tool uh, for devising uh, profiles such as for customer, patients, or specific for your clientele. Then I learned uh, coding in SAS, uh, that is descriptive analytics. And among the data sets that I worked on uh, was the 20th century famines, uh, the ones which have affected our planet uh, for the period 1913 uh, to 1998. And uh, using SAS, uh, that's my code, and this is the output. Uh, the results show that over 100 million people died from the period 1913 to 1998. And the country that was mostly affected was China. Uh, we can see China alone lost 30 million people in 1958 alone. And based on that, I wanted to know what really happened for China to lose 30 million people within a period of about one year. So I did much more uh, uh, drilling. And you can see I just picked up China, where country goes to China and uh, these are my results. You can see that uh, there had been a steady increase in debts beginning the year 1920, uh, half a million, 1927, three million, 19, should be 1928, a bit drop, but then there was a spike in the year 1943, and then the worst was uh, 30 million. Maybe if analytics was used that day, maybe they could have seen there's a problem, and they could have sorted the problem, then could have had the issue of 30 million people dying within a period of one year. Next, uh, I learned predictive modeling using R, and among the data sets that I worked on uh, is a bank telemarketing uh, data set, uh, for which I had 41,000 observations of 41,000 uh, customers. And my, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, project, my goal was to examine the influence of direct uh, telemarketing on whether a customer or a potential customer will make a decision uh, to uh, make a, a bank uh, uh, deposit uh, decision. So I used customer characteristics to predict which customers will sign up for term deposit accounts. Uh, my predictive var variables were age, education, and other factors. I call it in R to generate uh, a logistic regression model resulting in the following output and model. So this is my output. 
You can see my GLM and uh, the binomial. And these are the coefficients of the, of the variables. And then I was able to plug in into this uh, logistic uh, regression model. So my conclusion is that older clients, single clients, and those with higher education and a higher uh, bank balance are more likely to open a term deposit account. And those who are on the phone longer uh, during the campaign were more likely uh, to make a term deposit. But uh, married clients were less likely than others to accept marketing offers for term deposit, but uh, most likely maybe because they, have, maybe they had to consult their spouse or maybe because of other factors. Then um, among the factors that I, uh, another tool that I learned uh, is uh, um, ERD plus, and this one I used in my data warehousing, business intelligence, and dimensional modeling. A case in example that's that I worked on uh, is uh, do airline domestic uh, travel destination, a data set that I, I sourced uh, from government.org. Uh, and um, the goal of this project was to create uh, database diagrams and uh, analyze data on US airlines domestic routes. This is very valuable in determining prices or fares for that matter, uh, predicting uh, revenue on distance travel and improving customer uh, satisfaction. So these are my high level uh, uh, diagrams. Uh, that's my ER diagram. You can see the fare there is a trigger to all these other processes. And uh, the next diagram there, that's my relation schema diagram. And then we have the star schema or what we call uh, the fact uh, table. Next, uh, I learned data mining techniques using SAS Enterprise Miner 14.1. And um, in this, uh, uh, in, in uh, SAS Enterprise Miner, I learned uh, uh, to mine data using different data sets. But I just want to present to you one of them, uh, which is uh, lung cancer resection. And uh, in this medical project, I examined the cause and effects of patient's profile and major lung cancer symptoms on whether a patient will survive one year after undergoing lung cancer resection. Uh, resection in medical terms is a partial or total removal of a, a body organ. And uh, my data set had 17 variables and 470 lung cancer surgeries or observations uh, which were done at Rocklaw Thoracic Surgery Center uh, in Poland. The patient profiles include variables such as age, uh, the size or the type of tumor, and whether the patient was a smoker or had asthma or had other uh, medical uh, challenges. And I developed a model to predict survival rates of patients uh, one year after undergoing a lung uh, resection. And uh, after doing, uh, carrying out uh, modeling, uh, for example, uh, re using regression, using decision trees, and doing model comparisons. I know this could not be very clear, but uh, can, these are the model comparisons. After the fifth model comparison, uh, I concluded that Ensemble is a champion because it had the highest uh, prediction accuracy on new data. My current capstone uh, project, as I mentioned, I'm anticipating to get my business analyst certificate uh, this December. So this is my current uh, capstone uh, project. And uh, the title is uh, Crime in Carry for Better or for Worse. The objective of this project is to model causes of crime uh, in the town of Kerry and predict crimes for the coming year uh, 2016. Kerry has been known to be among the safest town uh, to live, according to FBI uh, crime rankings of the municipalities with a population of between 100,000 to half a million. For example, Kerry was ranked number one in the nation, in the country, as being the safest place uh, to live, according to FBI. 
but uh, I was doing much research. In fact, this morning I was, uh, uh, I, I called the uh, uh, Kerry, and I, uh, they have a, a crime analyst, and uh, I wanted to find out what really happened be, uh, 2013 and 2014. Um, I was told that they, uh, they don't really have the right data side because what I research online, I found it can be a bit uh, misleading. So uh, the writings for 2013 and 2014 indicate a drop. So there is no, uh, uh, the, I, I can't even really say that uh, Kerry was number one or number two for 2013 or 2014. My data set has uh, 4,791 observations and uh, 15 variables that have been collected from the year 2006 up to August the 25th, uh, 20, uh, this year, that's the year uh, 2015. And of course, I'll be using uh, SAS, uh, SAS Enterprise Miner, uh, to be able to predict the crimes in Kerry in 2016. And uh, that is me. Thank you.